Hello and welcome to Money Life. This time we are discussing succession issues all over again. And why are we doing this? Because three days from now, on 30th September, SEBI's deadline for mandatory nominations kick in. And if you haven't submitted your nomination in the format in which the regulator wants it, or actually filled up a form to opt out of it, then the regulator has threatened to freeze your mutual fund portfolios. I don't know if it makes you angry or not, but it's just one part of a larger picture where everything to do with transmission, succession, and claiming money that belongs to the people is affected because of wonky rules, multiple regulators, lack of any kind of sync or synchronization or uniformity among all of them, because each one operates on its own. Now, I have been chasing this for quite some time. In fact, in August 2022, in response to a public interest litigation that I was able to file in the Supreme Court, thanks to the help of senior counsel Prashant Bhushan, we had an, a preliminary response from the court itself. It sent notices to all the regulators. And this PIL was about the need to create a centralized database, which will allow people to get back unclaimed funds that are currently lying in large pools of money with various regulators. So SEBI has a pool, the RBI has a pool, and the sum total of this is a breathtakingly huge number, 80,000 crore plus. And since we don't have all the information, it's likely that it's much more, but not less. This, as I mentioned, was August 2022. Now, just about a year before that, in October 2021, Pramod Rao, as part of the Association of Registered Investment Advisors, or rather ARIA, had done this white paper through Mr. Pramod Rao, which was titled Making Succession Smoother and Simpler. It talked about all the issues that we have raised and suggested solutions. Now, the well-known banker K.V. Kamath has written the foreword to this report, and here's what he says. He says, all that this needs is a short and coordinated effort of, say, six months from all parties involved and, if required, facilitated by the regulators who could consider modifying the regulations to enable institutions to use these new approaches. Which are the new approaches? The ones suggested by Pramod Rao. So two years from October 2021, what do we have? We have many well-intentioned proposals, new rules from the Securities and Exchange Board of India, a new claims portal, Udgam, from the Reserve Bank of India, the promise of simplification after public consultation from the Investor Education and Protection Fund, and unsurprisingly, silence from the Public Provident Fund and other bodies. On the ground, not much has changed for people. Wait, one thing has changed. On the positive side, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman urged banks to launch a 100-day drive to refund unclaimed deposits. So this shows that the government also acknowledges that it's outrageous that so much of public funds are lying in these pools of money. In July this year, in Parliament, in response to a question, we learned that 5,729 crore of unclaimed funds was actually distributed. So these unclaimed bank deposits are pooled with the Reserve Bank of India in what is called the Depositor Education and Awareness Fund, DEF, right? This was over 39,000 crore or 40,000 crore. Now, 5,729 crore has actually been claimed by people as part of this 100 rate drive. I haven't seen too many people saying, thank you, I've got my money back. But 5,000 crore has been distributed, which means RBI itself still has over 35,000 crore of public money. Remember, this is very important. Not government money. This is tax paid money belonging to people like you and me, individuals who open a bank account. And for whatever reason, the money kept lying there for 10 years. After 10 years, RBI said it has to be transferred to a central pool and it remains there. For those of you who are interested, I have written a series of detailed articles on every aspect of this. So if you go to moneylife.in or look at the links that we're providing here, 
you can actually read in detail if you want to. Like I said, the RBI has, after this petition that I filed, because they went to the Supreme Court and said, this is what we have done. They launched a centralized portal called Unclaimed Deposits Gateway to Access Information. Udgam, they call it, right? This was a big step forward because earlier it was almost impossible to look at the fine print and figure out there was something that was put out by each bank, but there was no way to search it, no way to find anything or claim that this particular amount belongs to me or my deceased parents or relatives or I am the heir. You could do nothing about it, right? But even today, Udgam has just seven banks. And like with other things, we have no feedback as yet about whether it's working, how well it's working. What does all this mean? It means that contrary to Mr. K.V. Kamat's hope, nothing will push regulators, not even a Supreme Court PIL, to ensure quick, coordinated action. Six months, he said. But I don't think even an apex court order is going to help. One thing can make a difference. And I'll talk about it later. Now let's look at what's happened to Pramod Rao and his brilliant paper on the nomination succession process. Mr. Pramod Rao himself used to be the general counsel of ICICI Bank and joined SEBI as executive director in July 22. Now, isn't this wonderful news? It would mean that you have someone inside SEBI who's really knowledgeable, who has studied all this in detail, and being a SEBI ED, SEBI having on its board of directors, people from the finance ministry, from the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, from the RBI, this coordinated action should be possible. But nothing much has happened except SEBI's own attempt to simplify things. And we're going to talk about how it works. But remember, even SEBI, while it has issued in 2022 an attempt to look at nominations, look at technology, technologies without understanding ground reality is not the end all and be all of things, which all our regulators and our tech giants seem to forget. So, what SEBI has done is it wants to force people to have nominations by threatening to freeze mutual fund folios. It is like smacking people or handing out corporal punishment and saying, it's for your own good. So I will freeze your money, your hard-earned tax paid money, which you require maybe in your retirement because it's good for you. Because why? You have not nominated someone to get it when you're no longer alive. Doesn't matter that you need it and you saved it for your own life while you're alive. This is basic, isn't it? But apparently our regulators don't understand it. Not all of Mr. Rao's recommendations are workable. We don't agree with them, but it is a starting point for a discussion across regulators hasn't happened. This lack of coordination is a serious issue. Even on a simple thing like nomination, where SEBI has new rules, there's no uniformity in rules of rules or transmission processes between banks, insurers, provident funds. So banks stubbornly permit only a single nominee per account. Mutual funds, insurers, and provident fund, on the other hand, even the realty regulator allows multiple nominees. In fact, they talk about successive, some of the regulators talk about successive nominees. Proportional nominations, which means that you can have three nominees and say each of them gets 33, 33, 33%, or you can have two nominees and say 50, 50, or in whatever proportion you want. This is allowed. Other regulators have moved forward, not the RBI. RBI doesn't even have strict standard operating procedures, which makes life hell for anybody who wants a simple thing like I'm the nominee, transfer the funds to me after the death of a loved one, okay? Now, then there is again the continued lack of uniformity between SEBI rules issued in 2022 and the Investor Education and Protection Fund, I'm going to call it IEPF, under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. One investment advisor has written to me about how IEPF and SEBI have such widely divergent attitudes to simple things that unless they're both in sync, it doesn't help the investor. So on a matter like, transmission or issue of duplicate shares, SEBI has 
substantially relaxed requirements. IEPF has not. He says MCA requires a newspaper advertisement to be issued. If value of shares is over 10,000, SEBI needs it if it's 5 lakhs. Huge difference. MCA requires a succession certificate when the value of shares is over 2 lakhs. SEBI requires it only after 5 lakhs. Similarly, the issue of duplicate shares to be issued. MCA wants you to file a police report regardless of the value of shares. SEBI does not mandate a police report unless the value is more than 5 lakhs. Now, surely when SEBI changed the rules, a little discussion at, at its board. Remember, the MCA secretary sits there. The finance secretary sits there. So when SEBI is passing this at a board meeting and saying, we are changing it, why isn't there a small discussion to say, what about the others? What about RBI sitting right here in the board? What about MCA? Obviously, it doesn't happen. Now come to SEBI's own diktat. Is it good? Yes. Is it making things easier? Yeah, like I said, you know, it's simplifying it, the five lakh limit. All this is marred by the single factor, a threat that we will freeze your portfolios if you don't have your nominee in a prescribed manner. It's a problem with that prescribed manner as well. Or sign a declaration opting out. Investment advisors are pointing out all over the place in social media that the simple nomination process has been weaponized and made impractical because I, as an investor, when I have a nominee, I'm supposed to get that nominee's photograph and signature. This is absurd. The reality, we in Money Life Foundation have held lots of discussions and seminars on wills, and we know that the reality of each household in India is extremely complex. There are all kinds of relationships, there are joint families, Sometimes there are multiple families, as in two wives or divorcees, and that's why two relationships. People do not necessarily want to put out the nominee openly, nor declare them. In fact, we find that sometimes problems, anger, and strife erupts within households because somebody says, here's my will, and tells people what you're going to get, and invariably someone or the other perceives it as an injustice. So I don't see why my nominee needs to know while I'm still alive that he or she is going to get my money when I'm no longer there, provided, of course, that I haven't sold it and I've kept it. But there is absolutely no need for anyone to know. We don't need, we need that person identified. Mind you, if you can get a pan, ideally, if you can get an address, explain your relationship, it's wonderful. But if not, it is nobody's business to demand this as a matter of compulsion and threaten to freeze your investment portfolio. If all this is not bad enough, CAMS, which is a key market infrastructure institution, has uploaded a form, and I'm going to show you the picture. It demands proof of relationship with the nominee as per the form below. And isn't it ridiculous? I can nominate anybody. I can nominate a person on the street. I don't need to have a relationship with them. I don't need to know their PAN numbers. And if that nominee is not traceable when I'm not around, then I am taking the risk that the government gets my money, which is not such a bad thing. But while I'm alive, SEBI cannot dare to freeze my investment in any working democracy or any, any working judicial system, there would have been thousands of cases filed, lawsuits filed against SEBI, and this would have been shot down. But because we have a broken system, which is not accessible, SEBI gets away with threatening to freeze our accounts from 30th September. Of course, just yesterday, which is the 26th, we understand that this has now been postponed to December 31st. So, some good sense has prevailed, but the threat is still being held out to people. Will SEBI use the next three months to ensure that market infrastructure institutions and registrar and transfer agents implement SEBI's elaborate rules in letter and spirit? And first of all, will SEBI revise this nonsense about the threat to freeze accounts? Because remember, RTAs are a law unto themselves. They do whatever they please. They do not care about any number of formats that SEBI may have issued. SEBI has a format when its own scores that online 
complaint mechanism doesn't work, when it acts like a post office, having formats is of no use. I'm giving you two examples of how intermediaries say, we don't care. We have our own rules or we demand so-and-so because they're sitting on things with no consequences. So there's Akshay Pandey who writes to me, name changed. He discovered that his late father's DMAT account did not have a nominee. So the family did all that is required, obtained a succession certificate in the name of his mother. The rest of them issued no objection certificates to his mother being the successor and submitted all this notarized forms, scanned documents to Angel Broking, which was a depository participant, quite low on the food chain. Now, the DP said this won't do. First objection that the succession certificate mentioned face value of shares rather than market value. Again, face value is the right thing to do. Number of shares is more important. The market value changes every day. But the DP decided to ask this question and said, won't do. Then the DP demanded notarized copies of all documents submitted to the court in spite of them being scanned copies being given. What does this mean? It means that the DP is not only not bothering about SEBI rules, it's making up its own rules and has the temerity to sit in judgment of a court order. It's re-verifying what the court has said in the succession certificate. The Pandey and his mother are running from pillar to post. Applying to scores doesn't help. Another case, Krishnan, again, name change, writes about his struggle with IDBI. Even more hilarious, there's 50,000 lying in a savings account which belonged to his deceased parents. The bank says it will not transfer the money to him, though he is the nominee, and help him close the account. Why? Because this account is linked to a DMAT account, which shows the shares of Choksi tubes, which are not withdrawn. There's a holding of Choksi tubes. Krishnan pointed out that Choksi tubes was delisted and the shares have been rematerialized. He claims that he showed the physical shares. Bank refused to accept it. The account is still open. The money is not being released. After a while, this account will get frozen. Who does he turn to? RBI? SEBI? Is either of the regulators listening? In our experience, they don't. Nothing happens. In fact, people wait, bang their heads against a wall for a couple of years, and sometimes just give up in frustration. It's even worse with other regulators. And SEBI's grievance redress is like a mindless post office. I have lots of letters detailing what happens and we really have no solutions that is how our money has increased to 80000 crore impounded by regulators and they are using it for financial literacy maybe some literacy on the part of the regulators will help us rather than using our money to educate us on what is not working now it's another serious issue with probate if you're not living in Mumbai, Chennai, Calcutta, or other West Bengal, you haven't heard of what a probate is. So when there is a will, it needs a stamp of the court. That's called the probate. This is an expensive process. In fact, Pramod Rao's white paper says that it takes eight to 10 months. There's usually a fat fee involved, a standard fee itself, which is huge, and all the other fees because you need the help of a lawyer. This is even in case of an uncontested will. The will is contested. It can take six to nine years. But that's how our legal system works. Now, succession certificates are just as bad. Remember, again, you know, if you want to know details, Money Life on its website has articles on how to get succession certificates, how to get legal airship certificates. But succession certificates cost about one and a half lakh. And takes a minimum of six months. Now, government of India has very proudly told us, in fact, the prime minister has been on record to say 2000 British era laws have been scrapped. But this obsolete probate requirement in just three cities remains intact 75 years after independence. And honestly, even succession certificates need some therapy to make them less cumbersome and less of a nightmare for ordinary people. Legal airship, incidentally, a little easier. 
Isn't it time to standardize all this and come to the most easy option so that there is ease of living and ease of life for people? Remember, these are bereaved people who lost a loved one and are trying to get things done. Now, readers may recall that the need for a common centralized platform, which is what I had asked in the PIL, has now been endorsed by various people. So even the uh, Pramod Rao white paper talks about a centralized platform, very limited in its scope. I'm talking about something more broad-based. So he has suggested a simple centralized platform across all the financial regulators. It should have a simple common form for nominations, an online facility to make changes, have all your checks and balances and OTP, he also says there should be uniform rules on specific, successive, and proportional nomination across all the regulators. Why should everybody have different rules in the banking sector and insurance and provident funds and whatever? Additional point that he says to make this better is there should be centralized reporting of death from across the country. This will be a big lifesaver at a time when people are traveling all over for jobs. And even in case of permanent incapacitation, if there is a way to report it, it will be far easier because there will be a record and caregivers will have access to the funds of a person to look after them. Now, in May this year, there was another endorsement. The Supreme Court, remember, had appointed an expert committee to investigate the manipulation of Adani stocks. It also asked for other suggestions. So this expert committee segued into the area of unclaimed funds, very generously endorsed my white paper on the need for a central unclaimed property authority, and which is what is part of my pill, because it's talked about the need to bring sharp focus to the area of unclaimed properties, such as securities, dividends, bank deposits belonging to deceased investors. Is anything going to change? We are moving in the PIL from one day to another, which is typical. But even if there is an order, I don't think anything is going to happen. The mess will continue. It could get worse. Or there could be incremental changes by various regulators who are pushed to do something. If you ask me, the only way this is going to change if the, is if the prime minister's office decides to take note of it and declares that reuniting ordinary people with their rightful money is a priority, hopefully before the forthcoming general election. If that happens, believe it or not, every regulator will move at lightning speed. Forget about the six months that KV Kamat talked about. It may happen in three or four months. All the rules that are required, the gazette notifications, the laws that have to be changed will happen in a matter of months, literally with lightning speed. If not for that, we, hapless citizens, will have to be satisfied with tiny changes, if at all, as a big favor to us, or nothing. We may even regress. In fact, with all these different actions, we are now trying to do a study to look at what is happening, what are still the pain points, where is the difficulty. And we have a little survey. There's a link here. If you go to our website or the Money Life Foundation website, you'll find this link. Please help us in this process. Fill up the survey, share it with people that you know who have experiences like this with transmission and give us your feedback. Please remember, when you give us feedback, which we can collate, we can convert into a study, then only we can demand change. And change is happening. That litigation has goaded the RBI to act, has led to incremental changes elsewhere. More will happen. We also hope that the prime minister will take notice and things will move at lightning speed. But until then, do share this video, do make people aware of this issue and hope for the best. Thank you.